goes out of dummy half to find Ben Roberts who kicks deliberately for Ben Barber. Take on. on the full by Barber, he's got two in the bag. Barber scores. Now here is Kamali, a little chip, Slater and Idris. Jamal Idris over the top. Roberts putting a kick in and Hayne has let it go. Oh, Morris, Josh Morris. He chips it in behind. Ennis will score. Ennis scores for Canterbury. The menace is in again. Welcome back to NRL Tactics. Joined now by Bulldogs coach Kevin Moore, one on one in the studio. Kev, firstly, welcome. Secondly, a, a gutting loss last weekend to the Roosters. Can you still play semi final footy? Yeah, certainly we can. You know, the equation's there to be done. It's obviously set ourselves a bit of a hard task, but. Uh, no, we've, we've just got to sort of knock those off, you know, hopefully a week at a time, and that starts tomorrow night with the Earls. What is the equation? How many points do you believe it's going to take to, to play finals? Yeah, look, it's, it's something that's a bit hard to, hard to tell, and you haven't got a crystal ball, but traditionally 28 points is, is probably the figure that you've got to look at. But uh, as I say, we just need to, to do everything we can. Uh, you know, sitting on 16 points, you win every game, you sit on 30, so that's, that's the task for us. Last year was so successful for the club. This year's been a struggle. On the field, what's changed? Yeah, look, I, I think it's a combination of a number of things, Andy. We, we got off to a, a bit of a uh, disappointing start. You know, we, we lost a game against Newcastle that we should have won, and from there, you know, straight away we were hit by a number of injuries. Um, and, and those injuries have been sort of concentrated in, in the forward area. Yep. Um, I think over the first 10 rounds of the competition, we had about five forwards, you know, mainly front rowers, out for, I think, a total of about 40 games. Yep. Um, so that meant that, that our depth was tested, and, and that's something that didn't happen last year. So, you know, if there's an area that, and something that we've learned, it's, it's probably that we need to increase our depth from that point of view, and, and it's something that we're looking to do for next year. How much is confidence? How much is talent? Oh, look, it's a lot, and, you know, and, that, and that's probably what happened to us. You get into a situation where last year we were, you know, pretty much on average winning three out of four games. So you go into games expecting to win. Um, not that we don't do that at the moment, but certainly there were times through the season where, you know, just those um, important decisions during games tended to go against us, both things you could control and, and things you couldn't control. So the confidence is a very big thing. A season and a half in, in the head coach role, how have you changed, or have you changed? No, it's something that I've, I've tried really hard. I think, you know, I've been around football long enough to know that, that you need to just stick to what, what's important and stick to the things that you believe in. And it's, you know, it's, it can be easy to get carried away in the good times and it can be easy to panic, you know, in the times when you're not going too well. So that's something that I've really focused myself on a lot this year is just to try and make sure that even through those difficult periods that we, you know, you stick to what you believe in, you keep working hard, you know, you maintain discipline around your club, you try and maintain the spirit. And credit to the fellas, I think the players have been outstanding, even through that period where we, we suffered six losses in a row, the spirit around the club was good and I think we're starting to turn that around. Ranked second in tackle busts, but only 11th in points scored. What does that point to? Uh, it's a combination of a few things. I think you know one player like Luke Patton, for example, is is one of our most consistent tackle buster, and yeah, you know, that's often on kick return. So it's not the sort of situation where you you're putting points on straight away off kick return. Uh, and another reason is something that we've suffered a little bit this year is is we've been in a lot of games and we've we've created a lot of opportunities. There's been a number of games that we've lost where we've made more line breaks than the opposition. So that's a bit of a confidence cohesion thing. Um, it, it suggests that our support play probably hasn't been as as good as it was last year as well. Defensively, uh, the stats read conceded metres, offloads and missed tackles are below average in the competition. Has the club's defensive rules or structure changed or is this a case of, unfortunately, one-on-one -on -one missed tackles? Yeah, well it's one-on-one -on -one missed tackles. I, I think it comes back to to the areas that we've struggled, you know, at various stages through the season. I think, as I mentioned before, you know, the loss of personnel up front. Yep. Um, when, when you're not winning the battle in the middle of the field, a lot of those you know, areas and statistics you know, show that you're struggling in, in a number of areas. And, and one of them is certainly murders gained. If you're not winning the battle in the middle of the field, the opposition mm. tends to come through you. So, and that leads to you know, perhaps a little bit of panic on the edges, and that's where the missed tackles come from. How stats-driven is Kevin Moore? Or do they drive you nuts? No, no. Look, I, I, they're a big, I, I think they're the end result more than anything. Yeah. So I think they tell you a little bit of a story, but um, you need to work out how you get into the end. So yeah. you need to make sure that you go back to the start and you've got to keep keep your focus on what's important. And I think if you do that and, and stick to the job at, job at hand, you tend to get the, the right results in the stats. A positive has been Ben Barber. He is in good form. Are there now regrets looking back that you didn't use him earlier, that you didn't use him more, or are you confident that the timing was right? 
Yeah, I think the timing was right. I, you know, Ben's the sort of player that everyone wants to see on the field, and, and yep. I'm the same. Um, you know, I love the way he plays footy, but you know, juggling the right time for a young kid yep. like Ben is there's a number of th factors that come into it. I'm a, I'm a really big believer there's a lot to be said for making people earn their stripes. Um, yes. And there's a lot of things that go in towards you know, a player telling you when they're ready for first grade, and that's not just form on field, it's, it's not the brilliant play, it's, it's about consistency on the yep. field, it's about you know, attention to detail of training, it's about doing your extras, it's about your lifestyle, it's about a lot of things. So myself and, and the rest of the coaching staff, and I'm you know, talking about people like Jim Dimmick, Terry Lamb, who know a lot about playing you know, first grade football in that position, and, and we all thought at the time that, that Ben you know, needed to go back and, and learn a, little thing, a couple of little things, and it was also about the way the team was going too, and it was a time where we were struggling, and you're, you're mm. tempted not to bloody young kid if, if you're not winning the battle in the middle of the field, so I think we got the timing right, and, and Benny's showing the benefit of that now. Jamal Idris, centre to back row mid-season. Short term or long term at this point? I just think it's a week to week thing at the moment. Yep. It's, a, it's about what's best for the team at the moment. Um, Can you change? Oh, yes, yeah, happily will. Yeah, and we did in the game mm. last weekend. Yep. You know, and that's, that's a positive for Jamal, but it's a positive for the team too to have someone who can play you know, more than one position. So, you know, he's doing a really good job for us in the back row at the moment. It's, it's a position he's really enjoying. It's probably given him a, a little bit of a, a, a bounce in his step and doing a good job there. And I, and I think Shane Newman has come in and done a, yep. a really good job there. So it's, a, it's about what's right for the team. And, and Jamal's, you know, a selfless player who will do whatever is best for the team. Looking to next year in recruitment, Ryan Tandy already, Aidan Tolman uh, to fill the gap that's going to be left by Ben Hannon. Any other forwards you're looking at? Yeah, we are. We've, we've got our eye on you know a couple, of, and, and that probably strike player. Um, the reason we put Jamal in is is probably we felt that we weren't getting enough impact on the edge yeah. of the ruck. So it's certainly an area that we're looking to address. Um, you know, and I, you know, from a salary cap point of view, we we have the funds available to go out and buy one or two strike forwards. Adam Blair's name's been tossed around a bit. Yeah, Adam's on contract to Melbourne. So look, he's he's the sort of player that everyone would be interested in if he wants to come onto the open market. But obviously, there's a there's a lot of um, uh, a bit of a cloud around what's going on in Melbourne at the moment. So we'll just keep our eye on that situation. Yeah, it is a difficult situation. Now let's have a look at the backs. Uh, Trent Hodkinson, Chris Keating uh, as a six and a seven. You've also got Ben Barber. You've also got Ben Roberts as well. Yep. Uh, we don't need to be mathematicians to to say four players don't go into two positions. Who plays where in a perfect world? Yeah, well, I, the first thing to consider there, it's great to have you know quality players on board. And I think you know, we're just talking about the depth in our squad and, and that's something that we've tried to address, particularly in the key positions for next year. It's not necessarily four into two. You know, Ben Barber is, has played a lot of fullback in his junior days yep. and it's a position that, that I know that he enjoys. Um, and I think down the track he has the ability to, to perhaps turn into a Billy Slater, you know, Matty Bowen type fullback. Um, that's not a, a definite, but a, he certainly has the ability to do that. And, you know, you've got your six and seven, but then you also need your utility yep. on the bench. So you're talking maybe only about four players in the four positions there. Ben Barber can and has played number one very well. Point blank, does Kevin Moore want him at number one? Is that where you see his future, or do you see him as a frontline footballer? Look, I, I think there's a possibility for both. Uh, and it's not the sort of thing we need to make a decision on as yet. I think we've got put more pressing matters. But, but I think having people in your side who's, who can certainly, you know, Ben can play that one six seven role. You've got, you know, with Chris Keating coming on board, yep. he can play six seven nine. Uh, ben Roberts has played a bit of six and nine as well. So having three or four quality players to cover those voids, I think, is really important. There's a bloke that plays number seven uh, on the show, as always, Brett Kamali. You've offered him a coaching position. Other clubs are interested. Uh, what's the, the dog's stance at the moment? Because it's getting close to decision time. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and look, it's a tough decision. No one has a, the crystal ball to, to know when he's the 